Tonight we're going to do something very unique. Appreciate those visitors that are here, those that have new, are newly attending, and I hope that you understand that this is not a normal Sunday evening thing. Normally we sing, we preach the word, and we we uh, are very single-minded at coming to the Word of God. We will come to the Word of God, but kind of in a different, different perspective. Actually, we've been preaching through the book of Ephesians, and we'll not go there tonight. It's been a while since we addressed you as a congregation concerning our building project. But a lot has happened, and it's time that we come and just refresh ourselves a little bit. I hope that you understand that this uh, building process is... It's a, it's a hurdle, it is a, a mountain, it is an opportunity, and I guess I was a little bit naive because I served on a building team before when, when, and we built a, a large gymnasium in addition. Well, there was a lot of things that happened there that we don't have to go through. There was already an established property, established parking, established you know, site work, and all that stuff was already established. So I guess I was a little naive and just, you know, I go to a few meetings and pop, there would be a building, right? Well, I, th I think that uh, I, I don't mind large projects as long as they end quickly. I don't mind expending a lot of work and really, really hard work to do something as long as, you know, the next day it's over. A building project is not like that, is it? It takes patience, and perhaps patience is one of the things that is the hardest work to wait upon the Lord. Tonight I am going to do something that is very risky. I'm going to share with you my heart a little bit in the faith journey uh, that the Lord has worked inside of me, which has been many times very emotional, has been very challenging, and has questioned the very fiber of what I believe internally about God and what He can do. And I'm going to share that with you, and I'm going to ask for no comments forever about it. <laughs> All right? Uh, I, I, I think that I hope that you'll understand that uh, we can all put on uh, very straight faces and very serious looks and broad shoulders and we can say through all the right words, God can do it and God will do it and we're going to have a building and da 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 have faith da 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 But part of the, the work of faith is a crushing work. It is a challenging work. It is a... a a time where there's not the answers. You understand that if the answers were there, it would not be faith. It's a time to be still and know that He is God. And it's a time to trust the Lord. And I'm going to share a little bit of that challenge in a couple of passages, three passages. Uh, not a sermon, but just take you to the passages and talk through about what the Lord has been doing in my heart and has been for ever since we have been here. And I hope that he will share something very personally with you about this whole struggle. I do, and I bring it out later on in our presentation, but I do, I hope you understand that uh, there's not one man or not one committee or not one group of deacons or one financial team that can bear the burden of building a church building alone. Every one of you who is a member, and I'm going to throw in a regular attender, who comes and you, you receive the word of God and you worship with this, this motley crew around you of the family of Lighthouse Baptist Church must bear this burden on our backs. We all, I look at you to bear it just as evenly as you look at me. And I hope we're on even ground. You understand that, that uh, this cannot be done alone. It's, it's, it's going to be all of our building. It's going to be all of us that enjoys worship to the Lord at that place. So let's begin with a word of prayer and I will share some inner thoughts with you. Father in heaven, we come to you this night and understanding that we have enjoyed a great morning. We've enjoyed being challenged about Jericho and uh, have sung to you, have sang beautiful praises to you and heard specials that honor and glorify your character and your greatness. And Lord, we are here in great faith tonight to talk about our building, to talk about uh, what you want us to do and where you're leading us and we're just trusting you Lord and we are in many ways moving just waiting to hear from you and I ask Lord that this would be a great time I pray to be a refreshing time and the time that follows in fellowship would be all, would be very good also thank you for our family Lord thank you for Lighthouse and what you've done in our hearts and our families 
in our marriages and uh, challenging us from your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen. There are three passages that the Lord really worked on my heart. I'd ask you to turn to the first one in 1 Samuel chapter 14. You're probably very familiar with this if you've been at at Lighthouse for very long. Three passages really that over a long period of time that just in devotional reading and praying and urgently crying out to the Lord that came to my mind, to my heart, that the Lord showed me and taught me things concerning our building, and I want to share it with, with the congregation. The first one in 1 Samuel chapter 14 and beginning in verse number 6. The Bible says, And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor. Let me back it up a little. Let me give you the context, okay? Israel was doing absolutely nothing. They were in the middle of a conflict or in the middle of a war when they should have been moving forward valiantly for God. Saul was very apathetic. He was doing nothing. There's even a comedy passage that he was just hanging out under a tree. And nothing was being done. Jonathan, his son, was full, was full of faith. Jonathan, on the other hand, believed that, that God was great. Jonathan, on the other hand, believed that God would honor, as he had commanded Israel to move forward in the name of the Lord God, that God would honor if Jonathan moved forward. And we get to verse number 6, and it says this. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may, the word uncircumcised, of course, is a medical term, but it was a slur. It was a slur of those that would not believe in the Lord God. They did not have the token or the sign of people of faith, which in those days was circumcision. So when Jonathan said that, he was very clearly marking out that the enemies of the Lord were not for God. It says, it may be, Jonathan says, let, let us go over to them. It may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. That phrase, there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few, came home to us in the summer of 2004. So we began preaching a series of messages called No Restraint to the Lord. We started out in the context of our building and what the Lord would do for us and uh, seeking Him and following Him by faith. You see the verse on the wall of honor. It says, vision, no restraint. It comes from this passage. It often appears on the cards, the commitment cards, and our quarterly offer, offering. The whole context of trusting the Lord and going forward about where he would take us was based on the idea that there is no restraint to the Lord by, to do great things by a few people or by many people. We are just to have faith in the Lord. It's the Lord that has the power. It's him that has the money. It's him that has the will. In this story of Jonathan, the son of Saul who became weary at the apathy of his father. In the middle of cowardice, he demonstrated amazing faith. And you know the rest of the story, I hope. If not, if you've not been here, go back and read this. It's an amazing thing. He took his armor bearer and he goes out. And he was the impetus to change the whole situation that day and to conquer the enemies of the Lord. Certainly because of his faith that he believed that God could do anything. And there was no restraint to the Lord. And he would move forward in faith, obeying God and doing a great thing for the Lord. He put his life in peril with the single idea that the Lord could do anything with even a few people. I want you to notice in the verse something that sticks out to me. It says, let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. In that very phrase, it may be, Jonathan you notice, was not 100% sure. He was moving forward in faith and trusting God to do what God would choose to do. But he wasn't going to sit there like his dad. He knew that the cause was right. He knew that his God was big. And he moved forward. He says, let's go. It may be that the Lord will do something for us. And it really doesn't matter that we're just two people. For there's no restraint to the Lord to say by many or to say by few. And that is the faith that he went forward in. God honored that faith and that action, and he gave Israel the victory. Well, as we read this story and began putting together the series of sermons, God began using this story to challenge us that he could provide land, and he could provide finances, and he could provide a new building. I remind you that at that point, it's great to think about that now, and it may not seem like any big thing, but at that point we were sitting in an industrial building on Harris Corner. And our congregation was sitting at the very last place that you would want to have to attract people to come to church and to bring their families. 
Hey, how'd you like to go?